What's going on YouTube and all my Forex fiends out there? Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you another weekly technical talk. Today is June 23rd, 2018. It's a Saturday. I do these videos every week going over the technical charts and trade setups for the week ahead in the Forex markets. Touch on a little bit of the equity markets with the S&P 500, a little bit of gold, oil, all the US dollar major crosses, as well as the um, watch list that I've developed for the week ahead. So anybody who's returning these videos, I appreciate it, you guys. Thank you for the support. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, anything you guys want me to go over differently, any feedback you have or anything, just throw it into the comment section on here and I'll be sure to listen. Um, anybody who's new to these videos, I appreciate you taking the time to give it a shot. Please stick through the video and uh, see what you think. Let me know, share your thoughts afterwards, um, comments, concerns, compliments, anything. Uh, I'm open to it all. That's how I improve and give you guys the best advice and videos and content I can. So I'm going to go ahead and dive into the charts here, guys. Again, I go over all the major um, U.S. dollar crosses, S&P 500, oil, gold, and then all my watch list for the week to show you guys what I'm looking for, what setups I'm watching for the week ahead, and what we can be looking to expect. All right, guys, thank you very much, and I will see you in the charts. So jumping into the charts here, we're going to start with the indexes, starting with the U.S. dollar index. Last week, I went over with you guys how we were seeing some divergence, right? We are seeing higher highs and higher um, higher peaks on the price action, and then our RSI indicator was showing us lower peaks. So um, this is just showing disagreement between momentum and price and divergence, which is possibility of a reversal. And we're, we started to see that second half of this week, as you can see with the US dollar, it tried to break higher above this 95 resistance level, but failed to, and now had back-to-back -back bearish days selling off off of that. So this divergence is starting to play out a little bit. I am still bullish the US dollar for sure, but I think we might need a little bit of a correction, a little bit of sell-off, um, a little bit of mean reversion again, and then possibly ready to start looking for longs again in the dollar. Um, so watch this divergence, watch a little bit of sell-off, but all in all, medium term, definitely looking to the upside for the US dollar still. Euro, pretty much the opposite chart as we've gone over every week with this. Um, they're the two heavy, most heavily traded pairs in Forex and uh, it makes up about 60% of the transactions. So these charts are pretty similar looking in inverse uh, views. So here you can see we have a little bit of a double bottom forming on this strong 111 support zone here. We had the first bounce a couple weeks ago. Price hit it and instantly reversed off. Now we came down a second time and as you can see Friday we ended with a, a pullback. You know. Bears tried to push price down. Bulls came in and pushed back up to the open. I mean, to the yeah, to the open of the candle, and closed right around the open with a little bit of a Doji candle, just showing some bullish pressure coming into the euro here. We could see a rally off the euro as well, um, possibly this week, bouncing off the support and double bottom. But again, I'm definitely still bearish all in all with this pair. So um, just wait for the right opportunities to look to short against other currencies. Yen. Not too much going on, still choppy, and uh, respecting this upward daily trend line, but we are still in a downtrend below the 200 SMA, 50 and the 20. Um, we're still setting lower lows and lower highs. We failed to come down to retest this lower low, kind of just chopping around here. So price really could go either way, but we are in a downtrend, so we will be looking a little bit more towards the bearish side. Um, British pound, we saw that we were hitting the support last week. We did actually break through, immediately reversed, could be a a false breakout could be an outside reversal um, which that means it comes down breaks out and then immediately reverses and shoots up that could be happening we are getting a death cross here the 50 crossed under the 200 SMA we did break structure move lower so this could just be a retest and then move to the downside all in all I am definitely still bearish the pound but again we got to keep an eye on this price action and be aware of anything going on and ready to adapt and change our views at any moment so that is what we're looking at with the pound still definitely bearish but got to keep an eye on that outside reversal potential CAD continue to be weak Friday we bottomed out bounced off this 74 support here ended with a bullish engulfing um, so we may see a rally this week before continuing to the downside but I'm definitely short on the CAD as you can see this major weekly trend line was broken broke this major daily zone on the bottom here and just sold off we are hitting support we are seeing a little bit of mean reversion you know we've made a very strong move lower we got to have a corrective phase before the next move can come in so we could either just base sideways along here or I think we'll get a rally look for good shorting opportunities around 75 or so and then move to the downside again with the CAD Swiss francs, a pair that we thought was moving lower this week, and it did, 
but didn't quite go down to retest the lower low. We thought there was a potential possibility of a setting a new lower low, but it bounced. This is a strong weekly level that we're sitting on here. If you look left, this blue line. So price is going to have a tough time breaking it if it does. We're now on the 50 SMA though. A um, little bit of a you know, bounce to end the week here. So we'll see. As long as it stays below this 95, 70 area up here with this prior lower high market structure. Um, it's still technically considered a downtrend to me. Even if it breaks this 50 SMA, it's still structurally in a downtrend. However, if it comes up and breaks this lower high and sets a new higher high, that'll change everything. So um, just keep an eye on this pair and which direction it's heading. Aussie, another strong sell-off this week. As you guys saw, we were talking about it. Um, we had a little bit of a bear flag pattern here in this downtrend. Set this higher high, bounced off, and sold off really hard. This week continued to even though we did see a bounce Friday, we just bounced back up to this 94.50 resistance. Could just hit this and sell off, or again, a little bit of mean reversion after this strong parabolic move. Maybe we come up to around 75 or so, uh, maybe come back up to this daily trend line, and then continue to move to the downside. So we'll be keeping an eye on shorts for this pair as well. And then we've got the New Zealand dollar. This has been a very interesting pair. As you guys can see on the weekly here, um, this is the big weekly range we've been stuck in. We're back down to the bottom of the range, and as I've been telling you guys, it's failed to break the support multiple times. This downtrend looks like we may have the gas to do it, so we're definitely going to keep an eye on that. On the daily, you can see a little bit better. We came down and hit this support, and we are seeing some bullish pressure, but that is normal. It's tough to break these strong, strong, strong levels, so we'll see if this week maybe this, bear, this bullish rally dies off and we're able to crush lower. Um, possibility also a possibility that it bounces off this support and goes back into an uptrend now off of this strong weekly support so we'll be watching both sides of that to see how it plays out gold continue to sell off today um, as I called you guys when it was in this range here if it broke lower look to short it broke lower rallied back up broke lower based on this strong daily weekly trend line and has now broken lower again so really we're at the point here with this um, that we're going to be looking to sell any rallies, right? So if we see gold now rally back up to around this area, good risk to reward, just throwing a short, stops up here, targets down here, try to ride this wave lower, right? So um, really we were just basically into a fresh downtrend now off gold. And when we're in these moments, we look to catch these pullbacks. You could be a breakout trader. Maybe you wait until it broke this range and you got short down here. Um, or you can wait for a pullback and then enter short at a discounted price. However you trade it, however you play it, I am definitely still short biased on gold now. Uh, bounced off this strong 120 level here on the GLD chart. But um, all in all, definitely to the downside for gold is my opinion. S&P 500, so we're still in this bullish trend. As you guys can see, we're making push higher, consolidation, push higher, consolidation. I think we might be ready for another push higher. Um, we're still seeing more bearish pressure stronger bearish pressure than we're seeing really with the bullish moves um, which is a sign to us you know that the market is definitely um, a little bit scared a little bit of fear coming into these markets when it sells off but nothing like we're seeing back here in February March um, but still something to keep an eye on we are now broken out and retesting structure right so we broke out set a higher high pull back setting a higher low on the prior higher high so this could be a good area for price to bounce and continue higher um, we also can throw a little bit of a trend line in here to see if price pulls back to that maybe it breaks it um, but all in all again the S&P 500 this is our risk and risk risk on risk off theme all in all still looking to the upside still seeing risk off and uh, bullishness in this uh, stock market in the US for sure oil OPEC met this past week and agreed on a deal for cutting production. This saw a big bounce in oil. I saw the trend break and look like we we're going to go into a downtrend on oil. However, fundamentals came in and changed the plans a little bit. And we saw this very strong Friday bull candle out of oil. Uh, we're back now testing $70 a barrel again. So we'll see what it does this week. Uh, this has a big effect on CAD. That's This is pretty much why CAD had bad results from the news Friday however was still bullish oil pulled it up so we'll be keeping an eye on this pair maybe we can start looking to get long on pullbacks again um, if it continues this uptrend now so definitely something we want to keep an eye on and definitely something that has impact on the Forex markets as well switching over now to the uh, US dollar crosses 
starting with the euro dollar as you guys know I was showing you we caught a nice short trade here with this downward move but then hit this very strong resistant I mean support and we're waiting to see what price did and we're now starting to bounce a little bit so uh, essentially what this means is we'll be looking for price to come up to find resistance and then look to short it again I like this um, area up here at around 1750 um, right around up here to short it if it comes back up to here otherwise down here um, right around this red line here anywhere is really let me just throw this out here anywhere is really in this zone I'll be looking to get back in shorts right so this is where prior structure is this is where resistance is this is where um, we'll be hitting the 50 SMA probably as it's coming down so this is our reversal zone right this is where we'll be looking to get in short to continue this downtrend but as of right now we're seeing bullish pressure we're seeing a double bottom off of strong support don't want to be shorting this pair at all and we aren't counter trend traders here at core fx so i'm not going to be looking to long that however if you're a tr reversal trader um things of that nature this is a good opportunity you know might be a little late to get in now after this bounce but this could be a good opportunity to try to trade that pound dollar um continued to sell off again rally thursday and friday got a little bit of a rejection candle here though on friday off the 20 sma not the great greatest price action um, this is kind of looking a little bit exhausted to me. This move, a little bit of like a you know falling wedge type of reversal pattern, a little bit of exhaustion, not too clean of setup. So I'm not looking to trade the pound at all this this uh, coming week. But you know I would definitely be more so leaning towards bearish than anything. We got the death cross. We got price setting lower lows and lower highs. Moving average is sloping downward. 20 then 50, 200, perfect moving average order. So short, if anything, on the pound dollar, just not perfect setup. I only look for perfect setup, so I'll be waiting on that. Dollar CAD, we are now in areas where we can start looking for trades out of this pair. I told you guys all through this area, I wasn't looking to trade anything just because there's no clear trend, no clear direction, no clear setups. Um, now this is what we like to see. We saw a lot of bullish momentum coming into the markets, getting some exhaustion, getting some profit taking, getting some selling off. Maybe we pull back, let's say 50% of this move would be around the 131 area. That'd be a nice area to now look to get long, right? Getting long, nice place for stops, initial target, nice area, and we try to catch that next move to the upside, right? So the dollar CAD's back on the radar now, um, looking for a nice pullback here to get long and uh, continue this upward trend out of this pair. Dollar yen, still not looking to trade it as I went over with you guys last week until we break this range. I'm not looking to trade it. Too much choppy price action. You know, you can see we set a higher high, and then reverse, then pulled back up. It's just chopping around way too much on the daily chart for me to want to enter it right now. I'd like to see a break, pull back, get long. That would be a nice setup. But um, until something like that happens, I'm not looking to trade this pair. Dollar Swiss franc. Another one that's kind of off my radar for right now. We're in an uptrend. Sold off pretty hard, then bounced. Didn't quite come back up to retest the higher high. This uh, parity $1 level kind of pushed it and it sold off again. Um, so it's pulling back again now. You could be looking for long opportunities, but it's setting a lower high here. So um, I don't know, until it breaks this support, I'm not really looking for anything in downtrend direction. And until it breaks this resistance, I'm not looking for anything to go long. So really just have to wait for one of those to happen. Aussie dollar. Um, Nice week for the Aussie dollar if you're shorting it. Broke out and continued to fall out of this, uh, you know, bear wedge, bear pennant. And broke this strong support. Instantly bounced back up, though. If you look left, bounced off the 73.50 level, which you can see was some action in the past. Um, but we're now back into a nice zone for shorting. I think we'll get a little bit more of a rally. Um, this blue level here is a weekly zone. I think we might get a little bit more of a rally. Maybe we'll come up into this level up here. Uh, like the 75 range and look for good shorting opportunities here as the moving averages catch up as we get a little bit of discounted prices to try getting in this downtrend but I do think we are still bearish in New Zealand I mean the Aussie dollar uh, New Zealand dollar similar setup and again taking it to the weekly you guys can see this big range we've been in I don't like the weekly candle close here so I've been waiting for this weekly range to break right and with this strong move bounced a little bit came back down I thought this could be our break 
you know, we get a break, and then maybe it retests, and that's a nice short opportunity. You know, you could ride all the way down to like 63 down here, potentially even. So this range, when we have a range like this, a good rule of thumb for technical analysis is um, when price breaks the range, you can expect a one-to-one -one move of the range to be the target for the next move. So if this breaks, we could expect price to come down to 62 even. I'd say 63 to be safe, but that's the one-to-one -one move you can expect out of these bases, right? This is basing patterns. This is range breakouts. This is all of that. There's a, a very psychological factor at play in these markets, and these one-to-one -one moves play out very often. So if this range breaks, expect a bearish or bullish, whichever direction it breaks, move of the, about the one-to-one -one move of the size of this range. That's a safe way to play it. So I've been looking for a break to the downside of this range because that'd be a nice play to the downside for a you know, sustained amount of weeks, even months. However, this past week, we did close the big pin bar, bar candle here, a big hammer candle off this support on the weekly. That isn't enough for me to take a trade. I don't go against trends or anything like that, but that is enough for me to stay away from shorting this pair. Until we see what this week's candle looks like, which could very easily be a bullish bounce. Um, not going to be shorting this pair. However, I, I would like to see it break, um, you know, below this support level. I would like to see that. And this could be a good short opportunity too. If you take this prior move with the Fibonacci, you know, if it comes up to this 50 um, Fibonacci bounce here, it's also, if you look left, resistance support zone. So this could be a good opportunity to short it. However, that weekly chart is scaring me away from wanting to. And that reversal candle and this morning star, um, we got a hammer here, bullish engulfing. All this is just too much counter um, ideological, whatever you want to call it, counter to my idea. Um, so it, it's just enough for me to look somewhere else. So that's what's going on in New Zealand dollar. I do think we um, remain bearish overall with this pair, but I'm um, just this week specifically after last week's close this is not what I'm looking to do so moving on from that we will go to my watch list starting with the CAD yen this is my first pair on my watch list you got a little drawing here showing you pretty much what I'm looking for so we're now in a downtrend set a lower low I'll throw this drawing tool just so it's easier for you guys to see set a lower low pull back for a lower high set a lower low we'd like to see it pull back for another lower high look for a reversal somewhere in this area counter trend line break maybe on the lower time frames and then ride this next move lower right that 81 level down here it's a very strong weekly zone looking left so it's something that we definitely want to use as a target not necessarily wait, look for it to break it but look to take some profits when we hit it but um i could definitely see a nice setup coming in the later half of this week you know maybe we'd have monday tuesday rally wednesday thursday short something like that right so um that's what I'll be looking for on the CAD yen. I do think that it could play out. Again, this could just open the week and drop. This could rally and blow right through this trend line. This could do a number of different things, but that is if I see my setup happen. If I see it rally up to here, I get a rejection reversal here. Opportunity to short it, I will play it. If not, I'll let it go. There's nothing wrong with that. We're snipers, right? So we want to wait for the right opportunities and then pull the trigger. Euro yen, um, this was a short we took last week here at Core FX, right around this level. Rode it to the downside, took some profits off. It's now pulled back. Um, still short overall. We're in this trend channel. We're about the middle of the channel. Uh, we're still seeing some bearish pressure. Yeah, we have some rejection wicks with the bull, with the bears trying to push lower and the bulls coming in. But all in all, um, especially staying below 28.50, I do think this pair still has some steam to move lower. Uh, it's not at the best entry point now. It's kind of in the middle of the range, and price action's kind of played out already for our setups. So I'm not looking to re-enter this trade, but I am still bearish on it. Then we got the Swiss franc, Japanese yen, another trade uh, that triggered here at CoreFX. Up decently right now, about a one-to-one -one move it's made so far. Going to let it play out. Um, another one where, you know, setting higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. Bounced off the 50 SMA. Rejection wicks, strong support zone here a little bit of an inverse head and shoulders playing out as well um, so definitely looking to the upside in this pair I think we can come at least up to this 112 if we break that that'll be the neckline of the head and shoulders so that can be a whole new setup a whole new trade coming to play um, but that is definitely something else we'll be watching here and this uh, long still looks to be a nice trade pound Aussie actually I'll go over pound yen real quick another one we shorted around this area here. I took profits down here, got out of this trade. Um, it pulled back, but it still does look like it's ready to continue lower to, to me. Um, you know, you got your normal ebb and flow. We got this pushed lower, 
got a little bit of a rally. Now it could do a push lower, come down to at least retest this low, maybe even um, push set a new lower low. But uh, still short the pound uh, yen, but just not looking for re-entering at any point now. My setup played out, I made some money off it, and now I move on to look for other opportunities where my setup will play out. Pound Aussie. Uh, you guys know I was watching for this short last week, and I still am. My trade never triggered, but we got this big rejection doji candle off the 50 SMA and this really strong resistance level. In a downtrend, after this strong bearish move, we can even throw Mr. Fibonacci himself out here and see that we hit this 50 SMA, right? So we rallied up, never pulled below this counter trend line, never came and triggered a short. Um, but we never broke this 50 SMA and uh, doji candle here, and we ended the week with a bearish engulfing. So this is showing me still that I'm looking for bearish opportunities, right? So we had the counter trend move, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. We could see a lower low now. Dropping it down the four hour, you can see a little better here, counter trend line. Uh, we'll be looking for seeing some price action off. A little bit of a double top here on the um, four hour. A little bit of divergence, as you can see as well. Throwing a trend line, lower peaks here, higher peaks here. Got a little bit of divergence on the four hour, showing that this could be ready to move lower as well. So I will definitely have this on my watch list and I'll be watching for pound Aussie short this week. Just need it to trigger. Pound New Zealand. This is another similar setup. <clears throat> New Zealand and Aussie move very similar to each other. And this is both first the pound. So we hit the 50 SMA, got a little bit of a bullish engulfing, bearish engulfing, sorry. Um, looking to short this pair as well just watching for setups in this area for confirmation that we're ready to move lower strong resistance here that we're rejecting off of 9250 area um, and just looking for a good trigger to enter on my trade setup to ride this to the downside as well euro new zealand um no sorry this one's not on my watch list had that flagged for some reason uh euro all is the next one on my watch list so Again, very similar setup. In an uptrend, violated it. Lower lows, lower highs. Pull back. This is a pretty deep pullback. Um, not that big of a fan of them, but it's a very strong resistance level. The 50 SMA is being rejected. We have a hanging man and now a bearish engulfing. And I do think we could possibly see this pair roll over. So I'll be watching four entry triggers in the same similar fashion on this pair as well to see what we get. Euro Swiss franc. This is a pair that we're short. Also, it's another core effects trade. Got short up here off this resistance. Bearish engulfing counter trend line break. Um, this is our target down here. Moved about halfway. Ended with a nice uh, you know, shooting star doji pin bar candle um, on Friday here, showing the bears are still in control. So I do think this will gravitate down to the target around 44.50. But just wanted to share this trade as well. This is a trade that is still live, as you guys can see here. Um, should play out nicely still looking good um, risk is off the table you know stops adjusted to break even so there's no risk on the table so let's just see how this rides out and then um, Aussie CADs another trade we took this week we're making this bull move pulled back strong doji rejection off to 50 SMA and a higher low um, had CAD news so got in it before the news on this break got up in profits uh, we were about up to here when the news came out Risk was off the table, adjusted to break even, news came out, shot up, hit our target, pulled us out of the trade, and then did pull back, but full target was taken on this one. It was a Friday. Um, not looking to ride out any trades on a Friday. If my target's hit on a Friday, I'm taking the full take profit, and that's what happened. So that was a nice trade there on the Aussie CAD as well. So we'll keep an eye on this. Um, I don't like this pair anymore. As you see, this price hit this top here and totally pulled back. So a lot of indecision going on there. Might fill this wick. You know, might come up and fill this wick here, but also might roll over. So, not looking to enter any more trades on this pair. Just wanted to share um, trades taken last week with it. All right, guys. So that covers all the pairs I'm watching for this week and what's going on. Um, definitely have some more to watch for this week. Definitely have a lot of good setups. A lot going on in the world, as we've seen for the last year or two. Um, there's no shortage of events or volatility in the markets. So uh, we're just going to stay sticking to our plan keeping our watch list, keeping our routine, our strategy, staying disciplined and obedient and waiting for those perfect setups to occur. And when they do, pull on the trigger. All right, guys, thank you very much for staying tuned to these videos.
please share any feedback that you have if you like what you see if you don't like what you see check out all the other content on my page I got a lot of free stuff a lot of good content on there also I have a full training course and mentorship program corefxtrading.com check that out if you want to take it to the next level um, core.fx on Instagram if you want to check me out on there I really appreciate you guys tuning into these videos I hope you see some value out of them and I will keep producing them every weekend for you and I'll catch you next one